Welcome, my friends, to another edition of the Outreach Connection. I'm Dr. Pepper, shaking the salt. Okay, not really Outreach Connection, but it was five years ago. For five years, I was shaking the salt right there on WTJR, working till Jesus returns, right? I'm so glad to be back with you and thankful that my friend, the station manager there, Miss Donette Douglas, invited me to do a Mother's Day. And it's very significant this Mother's Day because it's also just a couple of days before my mother's 95th birthday. We have been planning this big shenanigan all year. And she lives with my brother in St. Louis now most of the time, sometimes in Clarksville. But we had plane tickets. My sister had tickets all the way from Washington. I was coming from Florida. We were going to meet them all there. And then look what happened. I cannot be sad or discouraged because we want everyone to be healthy and safe. And there are people who are now facing Mother's Day without their mother. Some that are in the tragedy of even going through hospitalization, even death. This is an unprecedented time in our country, but we still know God is sovereign, He is in control, and we're still celebrating Mother's Day. So to introduce myself, some of you already know this story, but I have this little track that I hand out all the time. It's called, From Troubled Teen to Teacher of the Year, Hall of Shame to Hall of Fame. So it was very appropriate when I was asked to submit my tribute to my mother to this particular edition of Chicken Soup for the Soul. It's called Celebrating Mothers and Daughters. I had had a portion of that in my own personal testimony in one of the other Chicken Soup books. And they said, what about your mother? What do you call her? And I said, Bootsy. So Bootsy, this is a tribute to you. And I'm just going to read you a section of this. Because for some people, Mother's Day is not a happy event, not just because of death or tragedy, but sometimes there are those that didn't have a good mother. I have a friend who has no idea who her mother really is. She's tried to trace her through the generational search things, but she, to no avail, has not found her. And she had a beautiful foster mother, so that is her Mother's Day. But even some of you had not even that. So my heart goes out to those of you or to those of you that wanted to be a mother and you couldn't conceive. I have friends that for years and years battled that and some finally adopted and some just chose not to have children. So this is my particular story and the reason that I call it um, Bootsy is because that was my mother's nickname growing up all the time she was. She had the boots on as a majorette in high school and I guess they'd say something like, hey Boots, where are you going with that girl? And they'd just go, hey Boots. So people thought her name was Boots, Bootsy. She's kept it all of these 80 plus years from high school, 95, and they still, we call her Ms. Bootsy. So this is just the first part of it. Nobody has a mother who paints the outside of her entire house bright purple. And nobody has a mother named Bootsy. No one has a mother who decorates a big ceramic pig in the front yard or adds life-size mannequins and costumes them for every holiday. Nobody does that and certainly not Anyone would have a decorated Christmas tree, all purple, up all year round for the last 30 years. <laughs> oh, Bootsy, Mama Bootsy. So I wasn't surprised at my friend's comments back in 1971 when I told them that my mother was planning my entire wedding while I finished my last summer course at school down at the University of Alabama. So I said, it's all up to you. You do it as if it were your wedding because she didn't get to have one when she and daddy got married back in 1945. It was right before we were supposedly in the midst of the worst part of the war. And my dad had joined the Navy. 
He had already been in flight training. He was going to be a Navy pilot. That's where he met my mom. He had to take some courses down there in pilot training at the University of Tennessee Martin, where he was flying a prop plane and a F4F is what it was called, if you want to look it up for you military experts. And that's where they met. And their romance continued from there. And Daddy never had to go to his assigned paper of Japan. He never had to bomb. He never had to fly over Japan. And we have thanked God for that for the last 70 plus years of my mama and Daddy's marriage. So I wasn't surprised when my friend said, you're going to allow her to do a purple wedding dress. Well, it wasn't really. It was an off-white with purple chiffon over it. But the biggest shocker, it was a size 22. That's how big I was then. A hundred pounds more than I am now. And all 10 members of our wedding party, including my bridesmaids and his groomsmen, wore purple. They had purple tuxedos with purple ruffled shirts. My bridesmaids all had different shades of purple. I should have sent in a picture of what the wedding party looked back then. But growing up in the 1950s in small town Clarksville, Missouri was absolutely perfect. Some of you may have had great childhoods. Maybe, maybe that was the highlight of your life. I think for many of us, we could say that it probably was. But I think as I got into my teen years, I started hanging with the wrong crowd, couldn't compete with my older sister who I thought was just perfect, and she was. And I couldn't even compete with her scholastically, um, just popularity-wise. She's beautiful. She was a size eight, and so for me, it was easier just to drop out. Maybe you have a child that has gone that way, or maybe you were that one that just didn't fit in. So it was so much easier to just get out, if you know what I mean. So I went through horrible teen years. I told all about it in here and how she tried to help me lose weight, but that really wasn't the issue. They took me to a psychiatrist. I had all kinds of other things going on and a friend and I ran away several times. The last time when I came back, this is the part I wrote about. I said, when I first came into the house that night, I didn't expect to see what I did. I stopped in the doorway and I found mom all alone doing something I had never seen her do and I hadn't done since I was a little girl. She was on her knees praying into this table, sobbing, and she was praying for me. I stopped right there on the staircase and I looked. And I said, you know what? This is not a coincidence because this is the moment that would impact my future forever. As we began to talk, she told me of the dreams that she had given up and how she had to be married in a plain dark suit as daddy wore his Navy suit with only one attendant each on the Wednesday night after a church service so that they could use the church. She told me that she had given up her ideal college future because she wanted to be an interior designer or perhaps a clothes designer and instead she dropped out of college after her second year. So they didn't get to have that wedding that she had always wanted and until then I had never seen my mother as a young girl. Maybe you can't imagine your mother as a young girl. No, you've seen pictures but you don't ever think about what they went through, the trials that they faced during those tumultuous times. Maybe you're younger and your parents were during the Korea War or the Vietnam War, and you can't imagine what it was like then. So with mom's encouragement, I finally graduated from high school, went on to college, and she even, with daddy, 
welcomed their future son-in-law, whom I had dated since my freshman year in college, and now she was planning my wedding. And since my sister Donna had eloped, she hadn't had the opportunity to even have a big wedding for her. So Clarksville has never seen a wedding like that. My hometown church had never been adorned with such an array of purple flowers, purple streamers, purple arches, five-tiered purple cake with a purple flowing fountain coming out of the middle. And in spite of the whispers and the dropped jaws, I proudly floated down the aisle in my size 22 purple chiffon wedding dress, handmade by my grandmother and with the attendants all in shades of purple, and my sister Donna standing by my side, and my mother Bootsy looking so elegant with her long gloves and her hair up in curls, and of course, everything purple. Thirty some years later, having lost a hundred pounds, actually it's been forty something years now, my husband and I together can fit into my wedding dress and I became a high school drama teacher. I had a built-in wardrobe for all of our plays because thanks to my mom, who was a costumer for Rain Tree Theater Guild, her purple house was the first place I would go looking for costumes, props, or mannequins. And we recently, when I, this was written, had taken my parents for their 70th wedding anniversary out to my sister's house in the state of Washington and all of the kids, the grandkids, the great grandkids, friends, neighbors, all came to celebrate Bootsy. My whole life has been built following in the footsteps of a wonderful, loving, giving, praying, selfless, very selfless mother when I was so selfish and so really ignorant of what I was doing and saying in my teen years. If some of you have children like that, if some of you still have horrible memories of your interaction with your mother, it is time to let go, forgive, and forget. And one of my favorite scriptures has always been Mark eleven twenty four. It says, when you pray, pray believing as if you've already received. And the following verse, Mark eleven twenty five 25 says, if you have anything against someone else, leave your gift right there at the altar. Don't even give, because until you have made amends with that person, if possible, then come back. And you will be forgiven, they're forgiven, and think how many times God has forgiven us I just can't even possibly imagine how many times he has forgiven me. All I know is every sin ever committed is nailed to Calvary. Every time I look at a picture of Christ up on the cross, I see my sins. And you, my friend, there's nothing you can do. You can't earn a reward. You can't do things well enough and good enough and be anything enough if you don't surrender it all to Christ. And when you do, he promises to pick them up and to take them and they're already paid. The price has already been paid. If you think you need to add on a little ragtag good works to have that salvation, you're wrong. That's not what scripture says. And if you have any ill feelings, ill feelings with your mother or with your family, with your children, if you're a mother and your children and you need to reconcile, do it now. Do it before anything else can stop that from being completed. The very fifth commandment in the Old Testament is the only one that has a promise attached. And it says, honor your mother and father that your days may be long. And if you remember how much Jesus honored his own mother, Mary, he even from the cross 
with his good friend and the disciple John standing on one side and his mother Mary having to watch the crucifixion of her son on the other side. He even then thought of her and he said, Behold thy son as he gave John now guardianship over his mother. And he said to John, John, behold thy mother. You can't give your mother away. You can't change who your mother is, adopted or biological. And whomever has been the one chosen by you during this lifetime to be that wonderful presence in your life of being a mother. Let her know how much you appreciate her if she's still living. And if she's not, you know what? Just visit her memories. Bring them up at a family dinner or share them with a friend. I know in this time as we're all still quarantined, depending on when you're watching this, it's a time where you may not be able to get out physically or even have a family time together. I certainly wish I could have gone on and flown to St. Louis to be with my mama Bootsy for not only Mother's Day, but her 95th birthday. But she's with me in my heart. She knows that I'm with her, my sister and my brother also. All of the children, the grandchildren, the great-grandchildren, and great-great-grandchildren to come. Who knows? But I do know one thing for sure. If we're going to follow in the steps of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, we must honor our mother. And we must remember, there's that promised attachment too. I wonder because my mom lived to be 95, if it's because she honored her mother. And I would say, yes, she did very well. Grammans, our sweet grandmother that came to live with us shortly after I graduated from high school and she stayed there until she went to be with the Lord. I know family is a sore subject to so many people that do not have a good family, or those whose families are not with them right now, or those who have gone on to be with the Lord. It may hurt, and it may really be a pain to even think about, but in this day and age, what do we have if we don't have the opportunity to make amends? And there's one other group I would like to mention, those surrogate mothers that you have had through the years, your grandmother, your great-grandmother, if she's still living, a teacher who influenced you. One of my other chicken soup books was Chicken Soup for the Teacher Soul. I talked about Miss Alma, the teacher who told me God had plans for my life, that I wasn't my sister, that I didn't have any expectations, except how God had created me. That's what I was to live up to. And I watched every step Miss Alma made. I followed in her footsteps, everything she did, everything she said. When I spoke to teachers for 10 years after um, graduating, so to speak, from my own teaching days at Lindbergh High School in St. Louis, I kept this poem that I often read at educational groups and it's, I'd rather see your lesson than hear it any day. I'd rather you should walk with me than merely point the way. For my eye is a better learner, much more willing than my ear. And your words can be confusing, but your example's always clear. For the best of parents, teachers, kings, are those who live their creed. And to see good put into action, that's what I really need. I can learn what all I should be if you show me how it's done, and I can follow every step you make, but your words too fast may run. Oh, those lectures you deliver may be very wise and true, but I'm more apt to learn my lesson by observing what you do. I may misunderstand you in that great advice you give, but there's no misunderstanding when I see the way you live. I'd rather see your sermon. And that's what God tells us to do. He says, be doers of the word. He says to show them, to step in. Paul, who wrote most of the New Testament, said 
If you want to imitate someone, imitate me, for I imitate my Lord. I cannot ever imagine telling someone to imitate me because I know I still have so many mistakes and faults. But, you know, there's one that was perfect. And there's one that if you have had a godly, Christ-centered relationship with your mother, then you know what I'm talking about. But if you haven't, if you are a mother and you have never trusted in Christ as your Savior and you have never had the blessed assurance of leading your own children to Christ, this is the good news for you. I also do jail ministry to women, and I tell these women all the time because Mother's Day is the hardest holiday for those women that are incarcerated. And if you are incarcerated in your own self-imposed prison, so to speak, whatever that is, you can be freed today. And here's what I tell them. If you were to die right now, if we were going to have this great earthquake and we all were sucked up into the earth, do you know for sure, 100%, that if you died, you would be in heaven with your Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ? And if you cannot answer yes to that, I'm going to give you the opportunity to be able to because he says you can. And many pastors, even to children, make it so easy that you can, A, if you truly can admit that you have sinned, and I know I have. I knew I had when I finally came to Christ on my third suicide attempt. If you can admit that you still have sinned and wronged and you don't believe, pray that God, through the power of the Holy Spirit, would increase your belief. There's a scripture that says, Lord, I believe, but help my unbelief. Sometimes it's just, I want to believe, but I can't. I would like to forget all of this, but I can't. And you're so right. You can't on your own. Because when you are being drawn and wooed by the Holy Spirit, he says, you didn't choose me. I chose you. And if God has his hand out right now and you can admit that you've sinned and ask God to help you believe that he so loved the world, he gave his only begotten son, Jesus, that whosoever believes in him shall not perish ever, but have everlasting eternal life. And if you can believe that, and pray and confess it and just say, God, I'm so sorry. I'm sorry for all the wrong that I have done. I could never, ever repay you, but I'm asking you to forgive me. I'm asking you to take this mess of my life and turn it into good for you, into the future. And my friend, if you can pray that, if you can truly believe that that's what God has done for you, then right now, you can be forgiven. You can ask God to give you that new life, abundant life. Here's what Jesus said. He said, yes, of course he came to give us abundant new life, eternal life. But he said, I have come that you can live abundantly. The thief, Satan himself, comes to kill, steal, and destroy. But he said, I have come that you might have life and life abundantly right here and now. Not just in the future, but yes, in the future for all of eternity. One of my favorite verses from Amazing Grace is when we've been there 10,000 years, bright shining as the sun. We've no less days to sing God's praise than when we first begun. As America has gone through this horrendous epidemic, pandemic, the coronavirus as it will long be known, 
as the United States is one of the hot spots even around the world. I have corresponded with one of my former students in Russia and her last words after a paragraph of how they're living out in their country. I am so scared, Ms. Peppers. I am so scared, especially for my children. This is a time when the enemy would love to get you down with fear. But God says, I've not given you the spirit of fear, but of power, love, and a sound mind. And he says, fear not, for behold, I have overcome the world. The world. He created it. He orchestrates it. He ordains it. And he has overcome. He is still sovereign. He is still on the throne. And my friend, he loves you and wants you to come to the place that he has for you. He's already prepared it. It's your mansion in glory. And he said, if it were not so, I wouldn't tell you that. But he has. If you've never established a love relationship with the Lord of your life, the one who can forgive you and give you new life, the one who can reconcile with your mother, with your grandmother, with your children, with your friends, your family, reconcile you to yourself. This is the time. And he says, come, now is the time. Will you come? And this is the day, my friend, that could be your brand new birthday. Mother's Day 2020 could be your new birth in Christ day as well. When you confess him with your mouth and you say, yes, Lord, I give my life to you, all of it. Take it all. Take my life and let it be consecrated, Lord, for thee. He'll take it. And he will turn you around upside down. I was a failure. I was doomed to nothing but drinking, drugging, and committing suicide. And Satan almost had me. He whispered those words to me. And God said, no, you are mine. That's what he's saying to you. No, you are his right now. And he's inviting you, come, just as you are. It's a come as you are party. It's so good to be back with you all today on WTJR in Quincy, Illinois, reaching out into all of the tri-state area and now all over the world. And congratulations on your new outreach there. I wish I still were part of the outreach connection, but I'm still part of the outreach. And I will stay in touch with all of my friends and family there. Thank you, Miss Donette. By the way, my brother is Duke Duval. If you've seen him on there in ministry, he usually does his once a week. And he is in ministry. And what a story he has. And so do you. So once again, I'm Dr. Pepper shaking the salt. And God bless you, my friends, for shining God's light. You're watching WTJR Television, Quincy, Illinois where we are working together till Jesus returns.